This is an instructional video on how the Drymatic 2 works. Now the Drymatic 2 has been available in Australia since June this year, 2015. Now I'm going to show you how it works. A little bit different, it's replacing the Drymatic 1. Now the Drymatic 1 was 57 kilos, the Drymatic 2 is 25 kilos. It is stackable, it's a rotor molded, very sturdy machine. It's a lot easier to take it from job site to job site. Okay? Now, the original Drymatic 1 used to do 175 cubic metres for air exchange. The Drymatic 2 does 595 cubic metres of air exchange. Now, that doesn't mean it can heat 595 cubic metres. That means you can exchange the air. So sometimes you might have to add the boost box, the Drymatic boost box, to those areas to heat, to add some extra heat. Okay, so let me just run through how the hoses work on the Drymatic 2. We have four ports, okay. Now, the actual hoses, they just unscrew, okay, and they pop in, and there's a ball catch there and a foam gasket, and they lock solidly in, okay. So that's how the hoses are attached. There's four hoses, okay. The heater hose has the foil, the foil hose, okay. Now, the heater hose has to be inside the drying chamber. So if you're drying a lounge room situation, timber floors, that's got to be inside the drying chamber. Now the machine can be either outside the drying chamber or inside the drying chamber, it doesn't matter. But that hose has to be inside the drying chamber. The hose right next to it is the room intake that also has to be inside the drying chamber. As far away from the heater hose as possible, so if you do a lounge room, run one hose one way, one hose the other way, okay? Now, what that particular hose does, it has two, this machine has two modes. It has an exhaust mode and it has recirculation mode. So the exhaust mode is, it basically sucks air from inside the room and exhausts it out the building or exhausts it in other places or two in just a moment. The second way it does it, it comes in in recirculation mode, comes around through here and out through the heater hose. So it recirculates through throughout the uh, environment to the drying chamber. So basically what you want is you want to suck air in and you want to recirculate it, okay, when it's in recirculation mode. In exhaust mode, it comes in this side and it comes out the other side. Now where you can place the exhaust is either out a window um, you, can plate, you can suck all the water out of the toilet, you put some plastic over the lid and you can put your pipe in there and you can pump your wet air into the toilet. You can pump your wet air into the bathroom and have an exhaust fan going. You could pump your wet air into a room that's got air conditioning set up. Okay? So that's where your exhaust intake goes. Okay? Now the fourth out there here is called the outside intake. Now that can be outside the drying chamber. So you can have it in the area that's unaffected. You can have it in a room, areas where you're drying some carpet and underlay with some dehumidification and air movers. You can be sucking from that area. You can also have it sucking outside. Now remember, if you have that one outside and you have the exhaust outside, you want to make sure those two are separated. Okay? So you don't want them right next to each other on the window because it'll be pumping wet air out and sucking wet air back in. Okay? So your out outside intake, that's traditionally how it's set up. Sometimes if you don't have the availability of doing that, you can run it inside the drying chamber, okay, and have the room at negative pressure. So by having that outside the drying chamber, you're running at neutral pressure. Having it inside the drying chamber, you can run it at negative pressure. It does not dry as fast as bringing in the fresh intake air, but sometimes you don't have the availability of windows and exhausts and so forth. Okay, that's just another way of running it. So that's all the ho how the hoses work. So you can run this machine flat like this. You can also run it on its side. Especially if you're going to have it in a hallway situation, you can run it on its side, okay? Where you've got limited space so people can get past. So the Drymatic 2 is a vast, huge improvement on the Drymatic 1. Um, it has so many more features. It's got a computerized control panel, 
which we're going to run through in just a second. Okay, the Drymatic 2, once you have it plugged in, you lift up your hatch, turn your power button on, wait for a few seconds. Now let me run through some of the settings that it has. So what it does show on the screen is, it shows the relative humidity, it shows the temperature, it shows the kilowatt hours and the hours of operation. Okay? So if it's on full heater and it's showing seven hours, the kilowatt hours will usually be double. So it'll be 14 kilowatt hours. Okay? So what we'll do is run through the settings. The setting buttons over there on the right. Now we've got some different things here. We've got the fan speed. We've got, we can change temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We've got the English language. We've got other languages in there. We've got our maximum temperature, which is maximum of 50 degrees. Well, it does have a time limit. I'll go back there. So, which is 50 degrees. We have the maximum RH and we have the minimum RH. Now, the maximum RH is set at 90 from the factory and minimum RH is set at 10 from the factory. These can be changed, okay? So, whatever you want before it starts exhausting. So, we'll go back there. Now, when we change the fan from high, to low, it does 350 cubic metres instead of 595, so it is a lot quieter. We'll change it back to high, okay? So there's our, once we've got our settings, we, pre we press the tick button, okay? Now we press the start button, okay? Now this, this, this blue button here is a reset button, so it resets all your hours for, for the second job. After you've finished your job, you can take a photo of the screen to, to um, use it for your records, but when you want to reset, that's our reset button. Okay, we'll press play. Now what you'll see is, you'll see two arrows running like this. Now the two arrows here are it's in exhaust mode, okay? And what you'll see is a little black dot that comes up here, and what you'll find is every 40 seconds, a black dot will come up until we have full bars, which means the heater is fully engaged. At the moment, only one bank of heaters is, is lit up. So if in 40 seconds time, another one will go. So after it's, in, after it's done, it's exhausting, the arrows will go in a circular action and it'll be in recirculation mode. So whenever you go and have a look at your machine, it's either two arrows running backwards and forwards like this is in exhaust mode or arrows in a circle which is in recirculation mode. We'll just wait a few more seconds. There we go. So there's another bar that's hit there. We have four in total to hit. Once it's four in total, then it's at full heating capacity. So it, as it, what it does, it ramps the heater up and it can ramp the heater down. So if you set your temperature at say 40 degrees and it gets up to 40 degrees quite comfortably, it'll start turning banks of heaters off, okay? And then overnight, if it drops temperature, it might start turning those banks of heaters back on. So it ramps up and ramps down depending on the environment that you're at, okay? We'll just wait just a second, a few more seconds more, and you'll find that it'll turn the third one on. And then if you wait 40 seconds, there we go, the third one comes on. We wait a little bit longer, and then the fourth one will come on. So it's very easy to use, okay? Very robust. Um, we do have videos of us um, when we were in test mode, we were throwing the rotor moulds down the stairs and, and um, off, uh, lifting them off forklifts and dropping them off to make sure how robust the actual machine is. Okay? So we'll just wait a few more seconds here and then we'll find out it'll be at full heating capacity. There we go. That's at full heating capacity right now. Okay? So that's how the Drymatic 2 machine works. Any more questions, please give us a call at Drymatic Heat Drying Australia. Now before you plug in any Drymatic products, whether it's our Drymatic Boost or our Drymatic machine itself, you want to make sure you have decent connection to the power point. Okay? So we run a sturdy lead that comes off the Drymatic 2. Now if it's not far enough, make sure you have a good extension lead. Do not plug them into power boards, into RCD boxes, plug them directly into the wall. 
Now we've de developed a lead here at Drymatic Heat Drying Australia where it's a 20 amp lead with the best 10 amp plug. So it's a really high quality lead that we sell to make sure our customers are using the right leads. Instead of buying that cheap from the supermarket or Bunnings or so forth, that cheap lead, you want to make sure you're buying a high quality lead. Obviously, it pulls a little bit of power to 8.9 amps, so you want to make sure you're having high quality leads not plugged into you know, the RCDs or the, or the um, power boards or anything like that. Okay, so you want to plug them direct into a power point. If you don't have enough, these are a 10 meter lead, fantastic lead. 